My name's Officer Dan. I'm with the High Plains Police Department, PD for short. I drive a Mustang. It's American muscle. It's built for speed. What's your favorite part about that car? Everything. What's, how fast can you go on that thing? As fast as I want. <laughs> I'm uh, chasing some hoodlums on some motorcycles. They've been uh, causing ruckus and some general mayhem. Name's Officer Dan, High Plains Police Department, PD for short. I'm just kidding, that's just me on the internet. My voice is super haggard right now because I've been screaming for two days. We had metal bands and out here at No Coast Drift Party 9. Also holding a regulation dodgeball because that's how we do. I'm supposed to talk about how I got into drifting, my aspirations, goals, and whatnot, so let's get started. In 2007, I took a ride with a buddy from Colorado at a grip versus slip day and it changed my life forever. That fateful day would introduce me to drifting when I had no idea what it was, and I took a ride in a gray FC and a white FC. I'll never own an FC, but I liked riding in them. I sold a bunch of Corrados that I had for some stupid reason. Sorry to all you Volkswagen dudes out there, I just, I couldn't hang. And uh, I bought myself a 1989 Nissan 240SX Coupe with five lug coilovers, and I'm pretty sure that was it. It was spray painted gray, and I proceeded to not drift at my first three drift events, but I autocrossed the shit out of it. Can I cuss? Does it matter? No, no, we don't care. Okay. Um, I learned and I practiced a bunch and I got better, and my car dynoed 94 horsepower. So I was really up there in the horsepower game. I eventually started competing two seasons in after just kind of going to fun events. And I did okay, I ended up like eighth place overall my second season in a single overhead cam slammer. And then we decided it'd be a good idea to swap an RV into it, which would turn into a very bad idea in the future. Once we swapped the RB in, we had it at stock horsepower levels and it was fantastic. I loved having horsepower, I loved being able to go fast, and I actually started doing much better in the competitions, ended up winning our local competitions uh, two seasons in a row. And then uh, the same thing that happened to me happened to a good guy from here named Jim Guthrie. He owns uh, a very large body shop here called Car Crafters. And he's a very successful man, self-made, wonderful dude. Anyway, he is a, or was, on the board of directors that runs this here racetrack that we're sitting at right now. Jim uh, was out at one of my events that I had started running around 2010 and decided that he would take a ride with me. And the same thing happened to him. He got into drifting. That day, got on eBay, ordered a freaking RX-7 with a V8 in it. Jim's crazy. Love Jim. Jim's amazing. And then Jim does one of my events and says, hey, let's go do Pro-Am. And I was like, what? I don't think I'm ready for Pro-Am. And we did. We did a, a full season of Pro-Am, and then Jim went straight into FD. Jim's an ex indie driver. He had his license for that. And, hey, thanks. He, uh, he petitioned his way in, got in, did FD, and that's a whole different story. But that's the reason why I got to go do competitive pro-am drifting. I did both Vegas drift and I did top drift in one season, and it was a little bit much. It was like eight events, and it killed me, and I had a full-time job, and I was like, wow, all right. I ended up getting like eighth place overall at top drift, and I wasn't even in the top 20 at Vegas drift because I kept breaking stuff also a theme of my life. The next year, I decided to do Pro-Am again, kind of more on my own, because Jim was doing FD, so I just did Pro-Am. Ended up getting second place overall uh, behind Forrest Wang. 
No, wait, it was a forced land. Luke Pakula. So I ended up getting second place overall at top drift behind Luke Pakula. Um, it was a really close battle all season, and he just inked me out by like four points. So I'll take second. Got a trophy, got my FD license. Um, took a year off and kind of got my ducks in a row. Took out my 401k. Got fired from my job that I'd had for eight years working for T-Mobile and decided to become a professional race car driver. Do you think that was a wise idea? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It was actually the best decision I've ever made. Um, so this would be 2013 when I got fired from T-Mobile for a, uh, they said lack of communication. It was because I, I was a little over passionate. Um, but anyway, I threw everything that I had at becoming a professional race car driver. So in 2014, I ran my first full season of Pro 1 and Pro 2 because that was the first year that Pro 2 was around. So I did both and that was pretty rough and very expensive. Um, what else in that year? Didn't you do the motorcycle drifting thing during that time? Yeah, too? so that's going to be kind of, I'm going to do an aside on that one. So this is just my professional drifting career, I guess you could call professional <laughs> drifting career um, competitive drifting career let's call it competitive um, so 2014 uh, I threw everything at doing formula drift the 401k funded that whole season credit cards funded my whole next season um, I didn't do very well I literally broke the car at every single round for multitudes of reasons it was never the same thing I got taken out of Formula D Texas because of a 79 cent shifter bushing. <laughs> it was just little things like that. You know, they hold you down. I, I, I like to think that Formula D was my college tuition because it really opened a lot of doors for me in other places. So second season of Pro 2 goes by. I am completely broke at this point. I am not doing well at all. Again, breaking the car every round. Drove all the way to Seattle and blew my engine first lap out killed it though made more smoke than anybody because it was all engine smoke <laughs> features man you gotta put the positive on things <laughs> david carey snapped this photo of me um and it's just billowing smoke like the thickest smoke you've ever seen and it looks on full angle and full tilt and then like just over the very back of the car, you can see just a little bit of blue smoke and that's the tire smoke. <laughs> the rest of it was coming from the engine. So whoever was behind me on that run, I apologize. I probably covered you in oil. Um, so anyway, finished that. Um, decided that renewing my pro license and my dreams of being a pro driver were probably dashed at this point because I obviously wasn't very good at it and that's okay. Not everybody's cut out for it. I don't think I'm disciplined enough to do Formula D, so I think that plays a lot into it. Um, but what I think of it as is college tuition. Like I said, it allowed me to get into actual money making in cars by becoming a stunt driver for the movies and TV industry. And that was because of a Craigslist ad that I responded to whilst doing Pro 2 in 2015. Um, I was an extra on a show called Manhattan and I was like dude pushing mail cart through room number three and guy picking up briefcase in hallway and guys standing on corner holding a cigarette. Those were my jobs on set but I couldn't hold a real job. I was like hey can I take off two weeks every two weeks? Is that cool? Nobody would do that. So anyway, I got on set. Um, the very end of that season there was a scene where one of the main actors was supposed to drive up a hill and stop a Jeep, an old World War II Jeep. And he kindly explained to the director right at the very end that I can't drive manual transmissions. And word had gotten out that I was a driver and one of the hair and makeup ladies was like, he's a professional driver, let him do it. So I got to meet the stunt coordinator for the show who pulled me aside and said, hey man, if you mess this up, I'm gonna kick your ass and you will never work on this set again. So I was like, oh, all right. All I need you to do is go up to the top of this hill and stop on a mark. Okay. 
So I did it. I did it twice. He pulled me aside. He said, so you're a professional driver? I said, technically, I'm a professional driver. At this point, I still had my license, and I went to the event, so I just didn't do much driving. <laughs> so technically, you weren't lying. Yeah, I, 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 I slept a lot in the lines at FD, and I, I did some practice laps a few times, and I qualified like three times total in two years. Um, but... Having that on my resume when I gave it to this stunt coordinator who I had no idea what he did or why he did things and so on and so forth and he was like, alright, I got your information, um, give me a little bit of time and I will get you onto a movie um, or a TV show or whatever and I was like, I don't even know what that means but cool man, it was, it was awesome. Because to be in movies or TV as a stunt performer you have to be in the Screen Actors Guild which is SAG. I didn't know any of this at the time. Um, so a year goes by and Al, which is the stunt coordinator, calls me up and says, hey man, I think I got you on a show for three days. Um, you're gonna be driving a van down a dirt road and you're gonna get shot in the head by Tommy Lee Jones and Morgan Freeman is gonna shoot the gun out of your hand. And I'm like, huh, I don't know how to do any, the driving stuff, cool. Let's make that happen. I've never been shot in the head before, I'm sorry. That's kind of weird. I don't know. I, so I literally practiced taking bullet hits until I couldn't move my neck. And I only had like two days to practice because that's when he got me on the show. Um, we did the scene. I had to take the bullet hit and fall backwards out of a chair into a stove. And that movie was called Just Getting Started. Horrible movie, do not go see it. But if you want to see me fall backwards over a chair and do some driving down a dirt road, you can watch it. It has a 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> but my name is in the credits, and I'm literally the first name in the credits. So it's really cool to see my name in the credits in the actual movie. So anyway, Formula D transitioned into me being a stunt driver, which is awesome. So I was doing stunts all this week. I was on a commercial. I was on a show called Army of the Dead out here. It's awesome, and I love it. So now I can kind of consider that my career. Yeah. Where did it cut off? Uh, like right, like probably like five seconds before I, I said something. Okay. I think we were at, so technically I'm still a professional driver because I get to drive for a living-ish. Um, I also, from a sponsor of mine during Formula D, I am now the USA warehouse and distributor for a company called GK Tech that makes 240SX parts. I have Whiskey Garage where I print my own hats and shirts and I sell them at the events that I go to to cover diesel and so on and so forth. So I don't technically, I haven't had a real job since 2013. Now I have a bunch of little jobs that equal one big job? Question mark? I guess. Um, on the side of that, we film YouTube stuff. And so back in 2012, before I even thought about doing Pro-Am, um, I got an opportunity to drive a Mustang because Jim Guthrie had crashed at Irwindale, broke his neck, broke his teeth out, broke both of his collarbones, and it was the worst wreck in Formula D history. Was that the one that flipped? No. No? That was a different one. Oh, <laughs> So Jim did the same accident that Dale Earnhardt did. Uh, Jim came around the bank at Irwindale and then snapped up and went straight into the wall. And it doesn't look bad at all. It's like, well, that wasn't a bad wreck. There should be no problems. But Dale Earnhardt died and his skull went through his face. He hit so hard. And it was the same wreck. He broke two vertebrae in his neck. He had to get cut out of his roll cage. They had to air flight him to a hospital. And it was a three and a half hour delay. That Monday after that Formula Drift event, Jim calls me from his hospital bed in traction and says, Hey Dan, I was supposed to film Motorcycle vs. Car Drift Battle 2, because he was in Motorcycle vs. Car Drift Battle 1, uh, but I tend to have broken my neck, so can you drive for me? I totaled my car, so I already have another one in paint, getting vinyl applied, getting lights put on, it's getting a hydro e-brake, an angle, and it was an 03 Cobra. And I'm like, yeah, duh, why wouldn't I do that? It'd be stupid not to. And <clears throat> that very next week, we drove our happy asses up to Oregon, and we started filming at o Oregon Motorsports Park, I think it was called. It was literally the funnest track that I've ever driven. Wait, so that thing was a track? I thought that was like the a... First the first part, oh my god, thank you. 
I don't even know how he knew I was thirsty. But he knew I was thirsty. Um, so we went out and filmed at Oregon Motorsports Park. There was only literally one clip of me drifting, but I drove that entire day in my 240. We brought both cars with us because I'd never driven the Mustang before. And I was wanting to learn roads and do stuff in the 240 first. So played all day while they were filming all the external stuff around the track and coming up to the gates and doing all that. I just had free reign for like four and a half hours just driving my 240 on this amazing track. It's got this section called the half pipe that kind of goes up a hill down, up a hill, and then up over a blind crest, and you could initiate so hard you would start to feel kind of faint because of the g-forces, you just chuck in and just be like, oh, oh, and then you'd be like, yeah, that was good. <laughs> so that was awesome. So that's Oregon Motorsports Park. We did filming all day there. The next day we went into northern Washington, or southern Washington, right across the river to a place called Mary Hill Loops Road. On Mary Hill Loops Road, which is that epic winding pavement it's literally owned by a museum and it goes nowhere. It just goes and up into a gravel parking lot. So it's not a public road. They rented it out. We shot there for three days. I broke two axles on the Mustang. I broke at least four or five GoPros. Very into that video, I flipped my 240SX off the side of an eight foot hill with Ernie Vigil, one of the stunt bikers in the passenger seat. Um, because I was used to driving in the Mustang and I'd done that turn literally 150 times on 295s, jumped back into my car on 245s and it didn't quite have the same grip. And I just went flying off the turn, flipped, my head went out the window because I'm a moron and I didn't tighten my belts all the way. And I like to tell people that I just gave it a little push and that's what flipped us back onto the wheels. Of course, that's not what happened. Hit my head on the roll cage on the way back in, got a concussion, immediately went into a Russian accent and started talking about, holy footballs, we done flipped it. <laughs> it was an uh, interesting situation to be in. Um, then we had to walk our happy asses down the hill because neither of us had cell phone reception to call down and say we were idiots and flipped my car. Well, idiot. Ernie was an idiot. I was. Um, so that video came out. It went a little bit nuts. It's funny because on Zip Tide, uh, I believe it was Chris Forsberg. The Zip Tide is a forum that, that was really prominent in the drift scene back in the day. But uh, I think Chris Forsberg was the one that actually posted Motorcycle versus Car Drift Battle 2. I was like, who the hell's this guy? And then I was like, me. <laughs> and he was like, huh. Ah good video. And I was like, oh, Chris Forsberg just told me we made a good video. That's pretty cool. Um, and then it went nuts. Like, it was literally, it was number one on YouTube for two weeks. It was the only thing that was showing up on Facebook when Facebook actually used to still share YouTube links. And we were competing back and forth for the number one spot with the lady with two vaginas. <laughs> That's, that's tough competition. Yeah, I mean, it was a close battle, and then we ended up pulling ahead. I think that video's got uh, 38 million views on it, and another one that somebody re-hosted and uploaded has another 28 million views on it, which is insane. Um, because of the popularity of that, we decided to make another one. We did Motorcycle vs. Car Drift Battle 3. We filmed it here in Albuquerque. Uh, it was a lot more expensive filming in like city streets, urban environment because we had to have full lockups with police officers and shutting down. We actually rented downtown Albuquerque on a Friday and a Saturday night from midnight until 6 a.m. Holy smokes. You talk about a weird thing to see when you're walking drunk out of a bar is two motorcycles drifting by, a big buggy, and then like six dudes of drift cars going around the streets. It was insanely amazing. I think that was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had in a drift car, was just that downtown. We ended up getting 612 noise complaints, Gee. but we, we had permits for all of it, so we didn't have to deal with any of those, but 612 people called in and said that we were being noisy. I was on the RB25, it was loud, fully backfiring, anti-lag. It was, it was a loud shoot. So 
That one did pretty well. It didn't do quite as well as the other ones. Um, so we ended up making another one, number four, which was ridiculously high budget. And I think that's why we can't do them anymore is because nobody wants to pay that much. Yeah, it got, it got too crazy. And it wasn't us. It's the producers that actually make the stuff wanted to be making movies. And we just kind of got caught up in the middle. Uh, motorcycle versus car drift battle four ended up costing like hundred eighty thousand dollars to make uh, with all the logistics and the lock-offs and the locations and renting that racetrack in Florida was like 20 grand by itself for two days ridiculous but anyway we filmed that we released it the weird part about that one was uh, Right before we were starting to film it, Dax Shepard got a hold of me on Twitter. I thought it was a fake account. I was like, this can't be that Dax Shepard, the idio idiocracy Dax Shepard. You know, go away, bite that one. <laughs> I like money. <laughs> anyway, that Dax Shepard reached out. I responded. He was like, hey man, I'm really a big fan of your videos. Do you think there's any chance that I could be in one of them? <laughs> What's even happening right now? This cannot be real life. And Dax uh, flew himself out. We wrote a little bit for him in the script. He flew himself out, brought his own stunt coordinator. I picked up a $500 BMW on Craigslist and just let him do what he did. Um, unfortunately, his section got neutered because he was drinking and driving and Triumph and or Icon didn't want that in the video completely changed everything once they did that but it was still really awesome working with Dax he is a super super funny human being just weird opportunities that have arisen from this motorsport we call drifting so yeah we filmed that one it didn't do well at all and by this point this is when Facebook shuts down all the links and it was a good video but it just it was too much and I, I understand this but whatever, it, it, neither here nor there. We're still trying to film and find budget for a fifth one. I wrote a script for it that's actually pretty funny and a lot more action-based with less acting. It's not what I want to do. Um, so we're just, we're trying to get that out there. So that's a side to everything that I also do. Also run the events out here, the snow coast, as, as you can see, that's why you're out here filming me. Yep on my own camera with your memory card um, side stories of that my camera broke so he just happens to have the same model camera and I'm using all the like my, my memory card and lens on it it was meant to be <laughs> it was meant to be currently what I'm doing with drifting is uh, not drifting a lot the past like four years of not doing FD I've had this professional grade car that I've literally driven like twice um, I had an adapter issue with my transmission and it blew up and basically totaled my entire car. By to I literally mean total. It totaled my car. It broke everything except for the coilovers. Bit the frame, caught on fire. It was a bad scene. So I got kind of disheartened on the, the Formula Drift car and decided I would be like, you know, I, I just want to drive so I bought a 350Z and it was the best decision that I have ever made in my entire life. I have like 1400 laps in the 350Z and I've changed the oil and a starter. What? Every time I look at this other car I have to change something and it breaks. So it's been a really really nice change. So that's my current drifting is I've actually been traveling with the Blue Z a bunch. Went out to Arizona, went to um, Vegas went to Denver for a grid life, all with the, the basic Z. It's not exciting to watch, it doesn't make noise, it doesn't make smoke, but I get to drive with my friends. And that's what matters to me now. You get close to them without caring if it like breaks or anything. Yeah, and it's like it starts every time and I can actually drive it to the track. If, I can drive it to the track if I need to. Does it have AC? Yeah, it has AC, oh. has a stereo. Um, it's fantastic. And like I said, it's so now, because of that one, I've bought two, two more. Yeah, two more Z's. I picked some up here for 2,500 bucks with welded diffs and coilovers. And I'm planning on for events like these, like we just had Adam LZ out and he came and drove both of these cars. 
So for next no coast, I'd like to have different guest drivers that come in and they don't have to bring anything really. They can just shred one of these cars. Maybe I'll do a school, maybe, a, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I now have three of these things and I have a problem. Because they, they just work. They just work. Um, on top of that, running my local drift series, kind of bringing some guys up who I'm very proud of. They did Team Tandem last night and they came in a close second to a team made up of professional drivers. So I'm really proud of my New Mexico guys. They made me really happy last night doing Team Tandem. Um, run all these local events and then we have this big one called No Coast Drift Party because obviously we don't have any coast. We're stuck in the middle of everything. Um, and this is kind of where I stand on drifting as well. I think that a lot of drift events in this country are polarizing for people. Um, there's a lot of events that are invite only. There's a lot of events that are style based only. There's a lot of events that cut a lot of people out of drifting. And I don't necessarily, I, I like that those exist. It's really nice to watch, but I really think it turns people away um, that aren't super inclusive or able to do those things. So I created No Coast Drift Party to bring everybody together for a common purpose of having the best party of their entire freaking lives. Um, and it's kind of grown and evolved. My first No Coast we had 16 cars. <laughs> All of them were from New Mexico I think. One guy came up from El Paso, and one guy came from Phoenix. Nope, I take that back. Brandon Wignick came down. Brandon Wignick is the only guy that has ever been to every single no coast. And he's from Utah, so that's kudos to, to Brandon for doing that. Um, but this event is open to anybody that wants to go. It's kind of like Lone Star Bash, where it's just a shred festival. Party with your friends. Have a good time, but I don't think you could take beer and alcohol in the mineral wells. Yeah, we do, we do. You do? We had a thousand jello shots last last year. Okay, I think, so I think we're trying to do two thousand this year. How, why don't we combine forces and do something gnarly? And get we talk really to Aaron about stupid. that. <laughs> Let's get really stupid. I'm into it. Um, and thanks to the wonderful management here at Sandia Motor Speedway, they allow us to continue this event. This is our ninth year of doing this. Um, luckily, nobody's died. <laughs> Fingers crossed, knock on wood. Um, things happen here that you can't really say on camera. We always have a huge bonfire and we always have metal bands. The metal bands that are playing here have been playing here since No Coast 1 in one way, shape, form or another. Um, they've changed names and bands, but the original members have been here playing these shows for free since the beginning. And we like to show them support. We built them a stage this year. And it was fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, last year we had No Coast 8, the Ocho, based off the dodgeball movie, which is where this came from. Um, basically, I line up the mosh pit and I spread the seas like Moses would have done. I line dodgeballs across the middle. And the moment the metal bands start the breakdown, everybody rushes in. And it is the gnarliest mosh pit that you have ever seen in your entire life. People are getting pelted. Babies are getting smashed. It's a fantastic time. People doing burnouts with People the People are doing burnouts with scooters. There was a Miata that like 10 dudes were holding to do the burnout. Apparently his brakes couldn't hold it. <laughs> um, we had a mechanical bull this year, so people were just getting bucked. Um, and all this happens immediately after the drifting stops. And then the party doesn't really stop until like four or five in the morning. Um, it's, it's a pretty insane time. So that's my current drift status, my future drift status. Wait, what about your tire review things? I, I, saw, yeah, yeah, I yeah. saw you doing that. Got it. So uh, I also do a few things on YouTube. I ain't out here trying to be Adam LZ. I don't want that. But I like to be helpful. I make how-to videos for GK Tech stuff. I also review tires with the Z out here on our track. So it's the same laps over and over and over again. And I think it's a really good gauge as to what cheap tires will really work and get you the most seat time that you could possibly do. I also recently started a series that I'm doing called a scotch and a beer with Officer Dan, which basically regales everything that I just went over 
into a 30, 25 to 30 minute episode where I also drink a scotch and a beer. So it's a little more classy. Um, Except here, he's just drinking coconut water. Yeah, I'm here drinking, I'm just, rec I'm in recovery mode right now. If I had a whiskey, I would just throw up all over everything. Um, but I have those and that's a very in-depth dive into my history. Each episode covers a specific event or season or happening or motorcycle. Ver I just released the one where I just became Officer Dad. We also, funny story, we did the redneck version. We also filmed the Russian version. So if you want to see Russian Officer Dad. Sick! <laughs> so if you want to see Russian Officer Dan, go check out the Scotch and Beer videos. Uh, they're all on the YouTubes. Um, so I got that going as well. Got a pretty full plate now that I think about it. Future plans for drifting for old Officer Dan include more of the same. Uh, I'm going to keep running events here as long as I can. I'll keep doing no coast as long as I can. Even if for some reason I move out of Albuquerque and go somewhere else, I still think I'll come back here to run these events. Uh, the pro car is running now, so I can actually travel to events and make smoke and noise and do cool stuff. So I, I'd like to do a lot more traveling next season. I don't think I'm going to be doing any pro events anytime soon, pro-am events. I like competitive drifting and it was a lot of fun, but I've done it and it's got me into some really cool things in my life. I also got to do demos out front at SEMA, so that was really cool and I've met so many amazing people. Um, and I just want to continue to do that. Now that cars have basically become my livelihood, it's given me the ability to do things like that, where I can go travel and I can do stuff. I got to go to Japan a couple of times and, and do rad things there. So I just, I love drifting. I don't want to ever stop doing drifting and I want to continue to get people into drifting. So that's the story of your boy, Officer Dan. I'll say that again. So what do you think of like the current state of drifting and what do you want to do with it to improve it? Got it, got it. So again, current state of drifting, um, I still think that it's growing and that's obvious. We had our highest car turnout here ever, which was like 128 cars. So nine years ago when I started this event, we had 16 and now there's a 128 cars here. Probably 1500 spectators came out to watch. Um, it's continuously growing. Even my local events, our average car count this year has gone up from three to four cars, now we're at 20 to 25 cars, and Albuquerque is a tiny city relative to a lot of other places. So I, I think the current state of drifting is fantastic. I think that it's growing, I think that people are still into it. Um, professional drifting is always going to be professional drifting. It's a completely different level, it's a completely different ball game, it's fun to watch. Like I said, I wasn't good at it, but I, I watch every single live stream when it works. Shots fired. <laughs> uh, but without Formula Drift, I know a lot of people hate Formula D and they're like, this sucks, and those guys suck, and those money sucks, and those guys are rich. And, um, if Formula D wasn't there, there's nothing really to attain to. There's no big brother to kind of have these little events where people are mimicking what the guys in Formula D are doing. So. I think Formula D just needs to keep doing what Formula D does. Just having really, really fast, really, really cool cars and good driving. Um, and then that trickles down to all of us at events. I know that some events, like I said, are a little more polarizing than others and I don't want them to stop doing it, but I'd, I'd like to see more events like this happen where it's just a bash, it's just for fun, because that's what drifting is. It's more like monster trucks to me or pro wrestling drifting is definitely pro wrestling <laughs> Hulk Hogan out so this has been officer Dan rambling on about my life's sob story for the last 30 goddamn minutes hopefully I'll see you guys out at one of your events I'd love to come out I'd love to have more of you guys out here and I will catch you on the flip side hopefully not my roof you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'll stand. Peace.